The Scallywag and the Golden Underpants by Giles Andrea, illustrated by Corky Paul. Long ago there lived a king of majesty and fame, the mighty king of England and King Colin was his name. King Colin wasn't clever and King Colin wasn't bold, but what made King Colin special were his underpants of gold. Now one night, while the king and queen were sleeping in their bed, a giant stole these underpants and put them on his head. Next morning when King Colin went to put his tunic on, he stared down at the floor and cried, My underpants, they're gone! They're my underpants of glory, my underpants of power. My breakfast will be ruined if they're not back within this hour. Go send out for my bravest knight, he bellowed down the hall, and so they fetched Sir Scallywag, the bravest knight of all. Sir Scallywag was mighty, and Sir Scallywag was bold. It didn't seem to matter, he was only six years old. What is it I can do for you, O mighty king? he cried. Retrieve my golden underpants, the trembling king replied. I am lost without my underpants, my underpants of gold. And besides, it's rather draughty, and my bottom's getting cold. Your wish is my command, O king, Sir Scallywag declared. I promise on my life the royal bottom won't be bared. He whistled for his trusty steed, who cantered to his side. Come, Doofus, said Sir Scallywag, we're going for a ride. They galloped over mountains and they rode through forest green, but alas, the golden underpants were nowhere to be seen. Disaster, cried Sir Scallywag. What will King Colin do? He'll probably chop my head off and then flush it down the loo. So he rode back to the castle in a state of dread and fear, but just then, on the horizon, something started to appear. A giant on a jet-black horse came riding brave and bold, and there upon his helmet shone the underpants of gold. I've come to take this kingdom, the wicked giant said, and no one can defeat me with these pants upon my head, and when I've beaten every night, which won't take too much time, I'm going to storm the castle and this land will all be mine. Oh, will it? cried Sir Scallywag. Well, let's just wait and see, for you won't defeat this kingdom without first defeating me. The giant roared with laughter. But you're just a little boy. I could kill you in an instant. I could break you like a toy. Just try it, said Sir Scallywag, while lowering his lance. Let's show him what we're made of. Come on, doofus boy, advance. The giant started galloping and bellowed out with glee. I'm going to slice you up, young knight, and toast you for my tea. Oh, crikey, gulped Sir Scallywag. Quick think, I need a plan. However can I overcome this stinkpot of a man? My lance won't even reach him on that giant jet black horse. My lance... He stopped, then smiled and said, My lance! My lance, of course! Then suddenly... Amidst the crowd, there came a creaking sound. Sir Scallywag had thrust his lance tip deep into the ground, and all the king and queen could do was raise their heads and stare, as Scallywag was catapulted high into the air. He soared above the giant. Now take this, you oaf, he said, and he smashed his armoured bottom hard against the giant's head. The giant tumbled from his horse, and off his helmet rolled, he scrabbled through the dirt to grab the underpants of gold. Sir Scallywag had got there first and shouted through the cheers, Just leave them there, you numpty, or I'll chop off both your ears. Sir Scallywag then raised the pants to show that he had won. They glittered and they sparkled in the brilliant evening sun. Oh no, the giant sobbed and wailed. I'm scared. I want my mum. And crying like a baby, he began to suck his thumb. Oh, thank you, brave Sir Scallywag, rejoiced the king and queen. You're the bravest little fellow that this kingdom's ever seen. No other knight we've ever known has shown such splendid form. 
Then the king sat down for breakfast and his eggs were still just warm. So boys and girls, remember this. Although you may be small, have courage and you too can be the bravest knight of all.